Hello and welcome to another What's New on ZBrush for Desktop tutorial. So let's take a look at some updates on ZModeler. So we have this proof project here by Enrin Shervenka. Uh, let me just access my ZModeler brush. And let me solo out that subtool over here. And now the first thing you'll notice is that while hovering over the geometry components, first thing you'll notice is that now we have a very distinct and very obvious highlight area for ZModeler. This means that if you're hovering over a point, you'll see that yellow dot and then the white edges represent the face where that dot is connected to because there are certain actions in ZModeler that kind of rely on that secondary selection, which in this case is this face over here. Now on the edges is the same thing. You can see we have a yellow highlight that makes it much more obvious where you're hovering over. And on the polygons, not only do we have a yellow highlight over the polygon itself, but we also have that red arrow that points towards the direction of the normal. Another thing that we've added is the snapping and creasing features on our insert edge loop options. So let me just hold spacebar and go to edge actions, insert edge loop. And under both multiple edge loops and single edge loops, we now have the option to crease and do not crease those edges. Now, by default, this was set to do not crease, meaning that if I added an edge loop here, you can see that there's no creasing there. So if I turn dynamic subdivisions back on, you can see there's no creasing, it's still smooth. Now, if we did turn on that crease edges and place that edge, you can see that this edge loop is now creased and you can tell by the double dotted line that goes around that edge loop. Now, the same thing goes for insert multiple edge loops. So now not only can you keep and alternate your polygroups, but you can also keep the polygroup while having creased edges. Before, what you had to do was have some sort of alternate polygroup and then just apply a crease polygroup. Another thing that we've added under our polygon actions on the inset action, we'll now have the ability to crease the new edges or crease the inner polygons. Meaning that if I'm insetting this polygon, by default, there's no creasing. If I set it to crease new edges, it's going to crease every new edge, including this inner edge loop and the outside supporting edges going around that new geometry. Now, if I set this to crease inner poly, it's only going to crease that interior edge loop. So if I turn on dynamic subdivision, you can see we have this sort of like rounded shape over there because that's the only edges that are getting creased. Now, another thing that we've added under our insert single edge loop is the ability to snap. Now you can alternate between a snapping by half, by a quarter or a custom snap. Now this means that I can have like, for example, the custom set to a third and then have that quarter and half and off. And I don't need to keep coming back here to switch. I could just have that snapping ability off. And then as I'm dragging my pen on my tablet, I can keep tapping control to switch between half, quarter and custom. And then if I tap control again, and you can see on the top left corner there that I switched to a quarter. This would be much more obvious if we're not on dynamic subdivision mode. You can see it's snapping to each quarter of that edge, meaning that this is a quarter of that edge loop, and this is half, and this is the other quarter. And if I keep tapping control, now I'm setting it to custom, meaning that I'm snapping to a third, because that's according to what I had set my custom to be on my insert edge loop actions. Thank <laughs> you.